are here and before we invite you to ask your first question, we wish to share something with you. Maida has been going through a lot of expansion, transitioning within herself. And what has happened is that she has, unbeknownst to herself, increased her ability to receive the energy that is flowing through. So as she was beginning to connect and as we were beginning to come through, we could feel the delight in her as she realized that this experience is different to what she has had before in its depth and in its breadth. And she's excited to see what will unfold. Let's play. Mm, Wonderful. Yeah. Today, I would like to ask about our bodies. I feel like as I age, I appreciate my body more and I want to honor it more as I go through this or to this next part of my life. And I notice how challenging that is because of societal conditioning of what like, particularly like what a woman should look like. And so I feel like I'm shedding a lot of that and I'm releasing a lot of that. So what can we do to make that process easier so that we can like respect and honor and really treasure our bodies as we age? You will not be surprised by the answer that we give you because it is the answer that we give you to most of your questions. The solution that you are looking for here is a self-acceptance. But also, deeper than that, a reconnection with yourself, with your own knowing. As you have been socialized, there has been a turning outward in terms of your focus and in terms of where you choose to guide yourself from. And so it is often that you look to society to tell you what things are good and what things are bad, what things you should aspire towards and what things you should not. And so this new relationship that you are having with your body is a personal one. We will tell you that not everyone who goes through the aging process as it is currently experienced on your planet awaken to a level of gratitude that is deeper for their body than before. There are many people who, as the wear and tear of the resistance that they hold within themselves impacts the physicality of their body, as they have that experience more and more, there are many people who turn towards, uh, we will say hatred, but it is not always so intense but at least a frustration with their body for letting them down. There is an expectation that you humans tend to have that the body needs to keep functioning at its utmost best always, and you tend to pay it not much attention when that is the case. And it is when there is some difficulties that you begin to pay attention to the body. And in the past, that has generally been a level of frustration at the inability to achieve the thing that you expect yourself to be able to achieve. And so we wish to point out that your movement towards a space of appreciation and gratitude and reverence even of your body and wanting to learn to support it is the exact same journey that you are going in other places within your spirituality and with your connection with yourself. You are aiming to focus yourself into your own knowing so that you are guiding yourself forward in your external life based on your internal knowing rather than the signposts and the pressure that is being exerted upon you from the outside world. Mm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Also, another thing I was thinking about that can be challenging is learning about the amazingness and healing, self-healing abilities of our bodies. And especially when I got into the law of attraction work, I learned about that and the the ability and the capability that it has for that. But then it can be tricky when, say, you have a headache and you notice that it's difficult to even cure yourself of a headache. Um, But I, I love knowing, and I feel like I'd love to know more about the extent to which our bodies can heal themselves. And also, yeah, the possibilities in that, and also what we can do to take the step into like embracing that, but also not putting pressure on ourselves. And and like, it's a process, you know, just because we learn about these abilities and the amazingness of our bodies doesn't suddenly mean that we can, you know, perform miracles as it were right away. Although I guess we can, but there is a lot of resistance to that. Again, I think due to 
societal conditioning of what is possible and like maybe the medical establishment, you know, what is possible and what is not possible, quote unquote. Do you have any thoughts on that? It is interesting that you bring up the idea of miracles because over the last week, Maida has been spending some time most days attempting to, playing with, aligning to the frequency of miracles. She has been doing this in a playful way, whereas if she had attempted it before the most recent of times, she would have been doing it to try to create an external outcome. The way, however, that she has been doing it this week has been entirely playful and entirely for the benefit of the joy of the experience or what it feels like inside of herself when she feels the cells of her body and the energy of her calibrating to that higher frequency. She is doing it for the pleasure of it. And so when you discover that it is entirely possible for your body to have miraculous spontaneous healings, And there is a lot of scientific evidence for those of you that need it that that is indeed possible because it has happened to many, many, many people and much of it has been documented, although much of it also has not. When you discover this, it is often taken through the same filter that you take the majority of your personal development efforts. And that is indeed to put a level of pressure on yourself and to deem some things good, for example, health and some things bad, for example, lack of health. And so the journey that you are on with this specific bodily connection and opening up to the possibilities that are available to you is the same journey that Maida is on presently. She is also very aware of the fact that it is entirely possible to have bodies spontaneously and miraculously heal. And yet that is not why she is calibrating to the energy of miracles and counterintuitively perhaps, and she has not thought this before, we are now sharing it with you and her. That makes her more of an aligned match to the frequency of it happening because she is not doing the calibration in order to create an external outcome. She is doing it for fun. And that makes a miracle so much more possible for her than if she was trying to inside of herself control so that the outside of herself would be controlled in the external world or in the experience of her physical body. And so when you discover that so much potential for healing is available, whether that be in your mental state, your emotional state, or your physical state, we would invite you to celebrate that and rejoice in it. But feel into and be, we will not say brutally, but candidly honest with yourself about how you are engaging with that information and what your intention is and what is really going on for you at the core. Are you fighting against the reality and demanding that it be different? Or are you accepting where you are, not fighting it, and then encouraging yourself to open to the more? That is a crucial difference when it comes to the attempt to heal. The forcing the universe to change creates such tension in you that it makes it difficult for you to be aligned with the receiving of what it is that you wish. And so celebrate the fact that miracles are possible and so much more is possible than what you can currently even perceive. There is an up-leveling of what is available to you on the physical plane, even though it looks currently as though the earth is entering more darkness than light. You are beginning to become so much more conscious and aware of the ways that it impact both in the macro and the micro. And so in the same way that we lovingly encourage you to bring acceptance, not defeat, but acceptance to yourself. Bring that to the parts of your body that are not doing as well in your estimation as you though, correction, that are not doing as well in your estimation as you would like them to be doing. We will use the example of Maida again. She has had fibromyalgia for a long period of time and it has impacted her ability to use her arms in the ways that she used to call normal. She could not do normal things. And there are still some things that she is incapable of doing, but she has structured her life and she is not in any resistance to this now. And so she flows with it and barely thinks about it now, whereas it used to be something that she cried about often. And so as you grow and develop the skill that you already started talking to us about, which is wanting to honor the body, wanting to flow with the body and support the body you will be able to move from the attitude of seeing a perceived deficiency in the body and having that prompt frustration with the body to coming to a place of compassion for the body instead. 
and a desire to love it and support it and not demand that it be capable of doing more than it can in that moment before you give it love. That in itself is revolutionary. And that's Mm. the journey you are on. Yeah, it sounds like a letting go of control, basically. We will clarify that for you. It is letting go of the illusion of control because the Uh control is not, in fact, had by you, but you like Mm -hmm. to pretend that it is. (laughs) Indeed. Yeah. There's one more thing that came to mind, actually, and that is to do with current energies on the planet, I suppose. I feel like there is a lot going on. There is a lot going on in my body and with my body, I feel as well. There are not symptoms necessarily, but interesting, interesting things going on. Um, I was I was ill a while ago, like a few weeks ago. I also had a very intense dream before that. And I feel like this this culmination of things and like my body is maybe trying to communicate with me more or is it maybe adjusting to changing energies and like ascension in the body how does that how does that fit together do you have any more on that Ascen- ascension symptoms is something that is experienced and it is experienced with more difficulty when it is done in fast forward When there is a level of acceptance of where I am is great and where I'm going is also great and when there is no sense of urgency and there is a level of relaxation within you, the symptoms that you experience as ascension symptoms will feel much more mild than when you are deeming and decreeing them wrong. And so when you say, is it either that my body is telling me something or that I am responding to the energetics around me? We remind you that many things lie upon a spectrum and often when you consider things to be either or, that is not in fact the case. So there are many ways that you are being impacted, but the truest of all truths is that you impact the outside world also. We don't often talk about the energetics of the planet in terms of it is going to be more difficult for you this week or more easeful for you the following week because we fear that that creates in you the perception that you are less powerful than the energetics around you. So we remind you that the overall power, not dominance, but power lies within you. And so particularly those of you who are sensitive can feel around you the impact of the energetics with which you interact, but know that you are the powerful, expanded being that does not need to control either the outside world or the inner world for you to be your full version of yourself. And when you come to anything, either in the outer world or the inner world, with that attitude, when you reassure yourself that even in the midst of confusion, somewhere within you lies clarity, Even in the midst of emotional pain, inside you is also peace. Not so that you can argue your way into peace. Not so that you can reject any of the difficulties that you are experiencing, but so that you reassure yourself that you within yourself have got the capacity to support yourself as you endure things that are challenging and as you live things that are uplifting. You will be recalibrating inside of yourself to a level of giving and receiving support that will then calibrate you to the giving and receiving support in a full way, much more fuller, much more full than what you currently perceive is possible with your outside world. There is a transformation that is currently happening within many individuals at present and we will remind you that when it comes to the spiritual speaking that we hear in terms of dimensions and 5D and 4D and 3D and 6D and 12D, none is better than the others. They are all a part of the whole. And so the less resistance that you have around the reality that you are experiencing on any and every level, the more easeful your expansion to the next will be. You are always expanding and everything that came before you is a part of you and will come with you to whatever it is that you are creating. And the less that you reject any aspect or layer of being or of experience or physicality, 
the more you will find yourself expanding with ease and with flow. And so this is a matter of stepping more into a place of self-support and self-acceptance within you so that you can have that relationship within you and without you. And that is what you are looking for. You are exploring this inside of your body and that is a beautiful thing. And you will see it also in your outer world. And that too is a beautiful thing. But we leave you with this. When you try to control your inner world, you are attempting to dominate yourself. When you try and control the outer world, you are attempting to dominate what some of you will consider God. We will say the universe. You will be fighting against because you cannot push against without creating the same similar, same resistance that comes back at you. And so we will clarify this one last time, one last time in this conversation, because we will never get bored of repeating ourselves for your benefit. Sometimes you need to hear things many, 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 many times before they will start to feel safe enough for you to open up to them. And so we will remind you of this. Acceptance is not defeat. Acceptance and openness are allowing. And all we are inviting you to consider doing is to not fight what is because it already is. And so when you attempt to fight it, it is not a fight that you can win. But from a place of understanding and accepting where you are, you are capable of moving to anywhere you want. You are capable of so much more than you currently understand and that is because you have not been living with full batteries. And as you start to connect more to that self-love, self-support and self-acceptance, you will build a sense of safety in you that will not demand from you that you control the outer world anymore so that you feel safe. Most of the conflicts and problems you are seeing in your world right now is because people are trying to control the outer world so that they soothe their inner experience. And this is the way to soothe that and impact the world in the exact way that you are wishing for. And we are here to support you in that and everything else. We love you. We love you. We love you. Go well. Mm -hmm. Oh, holy shit. (laughs) (laughs) That felt so different. Wow, that's so interesting. What, did it feel like anything different to you? Because you've had this experience a few times now. I have. Ta-da. Um, it felt, in a way, yeah, I felt like it was very, like I could feel, like I, I, I resonated with, it's, um, how do I find the words? Like I resonated with their words, but they were not like a surprise. Do you know what I yeah. mean? It was like, yeah, it's it's not as expected because that sounds a bit like there. But, um, but like, yeah, got it. You know, I'm there. Do you know what I mean? And I felt like, in, especially in the left side of my body, there was stuff happening, I felt. It was the maybe feminine something. energy allowing side yeah. of your body. <laughs> yeah, it was. I could feel something um, going on. So I, I've been feeling more things and I'm a bit like, I don't know what it means, but it's interesting to just observe the things, you know, that are happening. So, um, yeah, that's what I felt. And, like, it is interesting to feel the love in it because I think in the past when I've not been – at the level of love, it's made me really emotional. But like, I think if you're, if you're more in that love, it doesn't feel like the, you don't feel a difference so much. It just feels like, ah, this is lovely. Like a warm bath, you know? Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 That's, um, I had a conversation with someone last week where they said something like, oh, you're so lucky because you have aura on flow through you and you get your big activated love of love heart or whatever. And, Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. But like that comes second. Like mm-hmm. it's me learning to do that for myself that then creates a space that it can kind of flow through me. Because You I, have to meet that energy, yeah, right? Exactly, so, exactly otherwise right. you can't. You couldn't if you weren't meeting it, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so that reminded me of what you said. It's it's like a, I think they offer us like a re-remembering and a reconnecting to, um, and I still get floored by it. Like I listen back all the time and I'm like, wow, wow. And it, that felt really different to me. But also I feel like, yeah, the more, the more, um, I don't know, acclimatized, I guess you are, the less of the massive contrast it can be. So it's less of a rough ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It just felt like I was just sitting here like, ah, oh, this is nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I like that. Yeah. The, the miracles 
thing stood out. So, yeah, that's I just out of nowhere, I went, I'm going to start calibrating to the energy of miracles. And I just sit there for like five or ten minutes and I just have the intention to calibrate to the energy of miracles and I'll remind myself that miracles happen all the time and they don't need to be as rare as what we like try and think that they are. And like that's literally what I do. And then I just feel into the frequency like of what I imagine miracle energy feels like and then it just kind of starts to kind of bubble in my body in different parts and I can feel like in some places it's more allowing and some places it's not as allowing and I'm like oh that's interesting and like I'm not trying to clear it out or force it I'm just sitting with it and it's just yeah but I, I, it would never have occurred to me to do that before and all of a sudden it just yeah yeah see that's that's such a thing because I feel like I think especially in in the past I noticed I think I got to a place where there's like I felt like there's not not any magic in my life or maybe like magic miracles, whatever you want to call it. It's all like a similar, you know, yeah. sort of sparkly energy, I find. So, yeah, and it's just been like opening up to all this, you know, and law, law of attraction is maybe just one facet of it, but like yeah. the spiritual channeling, all that stuff, you know, it's like it just feels so magical and it's suddenly like it just brings – a certain sparkle back into life, you know, because it's all, it can be very 3D, can't it? It's all about like, I don't know, jobs and, and you know, going to work and coming home and having, I don't know, it's all, it just can, it can feel a bit mundane and stuff. So it's good to like find and find the magic in the mundane almost. There's like a, a real, a, like I feel like with my body, as I mentioned, I feel this renewed appreciation for it. And I want to honor it going forward because a lot of what you see around you is like, oh, it's all downhill from here and like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'm like, no, it doesn't have to be that way, damn it. I'm like, the best is yet to come. And that's my attitude. So, yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. Um, I remember actually deciding to start appreciating the small things. And like I'm talking 20 years ago, I think I read something and it inspired me. And I'm like really good at that now. Like one of the best compliments I've had is, well, you helped me remember that the little things are really good, big things. Like, um, and I, I feel like, so when you said, oh, life is a bit mundane, I'm like, oh, is it? Because I, I feel like those, but this is different to a forced gratitude practice because I also tried to have a gratitude journal, right? And that was like this thing I was going to do because I wanted to change my inner world and I had this vibe of just like that same thing, like trying to control myself and make myself better by practicing gratitude. So, But I wasn't actually practicing gratitude. I was just like making a list of the shit I should be grateful for. Like I didn't activate the feeling. Yeah. So not the same thing. Yeah, not yeah. at all. But I, was, I thought I was doing it. And I'm like, but I wasn't activating the feeling of actually feeling the gratitude for the things. And I don't know what happened. So I've never kept a journal, but I'm really good. Like I say to Matt all the time, we're the luckiest. Like we're so lucky. Like, look how lucky we are. I've got the best dogs ever. Like, look how lucky we are. We get to walk in the sunset. Oh my God, we're the luckiest. And I genuinely feel it. But uh, like, I think when I think about it, like I've consciously made the decision to notice and be aware of and experience the gratitude. But I think the difference is between when I was trying to do my gratitude journal is I'm not doing it. Oh, this is so interesting. I'm not doing it to change myself. I'm not doing it to change my life. I'm not doing it to make shit better than it already is. Yeah. Like I'm again, that's genuinely, controlling. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Like I'm genuinely going, fuck, this is cool. Like, my God, look at this sunset. So I go for a beach walk with my friend Simon every Sunday with Nelson. I can't take Gussie because he gets car sick. But anyway, another story. And every Sunday I'm like, look how beautiful this beach is. We're the luckiest to live near here. Like, And it's just become so ingrained in me, but it's not pretend. Like I'm genuinely excited and it's like a feeling. And I think that makes life so much more magical. I think I'm a, li- a bit like a, what little kids are about it. Like, oh, my God, this is the best. Like I can be like that. But I had to kind of retrain myself yeah. to, to be and that. That, re- that resonates. Yeah. yeah, totally. I feel that way too, like especially now because here it's, you know, it's about to become or get warmer, we we hope. That's that's a British thing to say, isn't it? And oh, God, we hope. But um. Yeah, and I feel like this when I see the sun coming in, I just want to go outside. I'm like, oh, sunshine. And then there's like a tree friend nearby that I just go and sort of say hey to. And it's like, you know, just standing next to the tree, like with the sun on me is like, it's just the best thing ever. Do you know yes. what I mean? It's like, yes. oh, this is yes. just, 
oh, it doesn't get any better than this. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, the simple, the simple things. Like in mundane, I guess mundane is like a bit of a judgment, isn't it? But I like, yeah, I think I, I did genuinely used to feel that way. I was like, you know, there must be, there must be more to life than this kind of thing. I'm sure a lot of people have been there. Um, yeah, but now I feel like, yeah, I see, I just I really appreciate so much more. And it like the inside world and the outside world, it all works together. It's yeah. all reflection of the other. Totally, I feel. it's It can't be one way and not the other way. It's like, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think that's the difference between like kids and us as well. You know how they've got like all the energy in the world and they're so excited about everything and it's like yeah. they're really engaging with their world and like learning about it and they're excited and stuff. And then we get all like jaded and, oh, I've got to do this and then I've got to do that. And like we get all serious about stuff. But refinding those pockets of like, fuck, this is awesome. I get to do this amazing thing. And my God, my friends are like amazing. I'm so lucky. And like just that appreciation for the sake of the appreciation rather than as a spiritual practice to change a thing, I think makes all the difference. And I think It's such a paradox, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the same as my calibrating to miracles. Like I'm not doing it to even create miracles. To get a result. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah doing it for the for the deliciousness of the feeling of like what it would feel like you know just being like in my, that it feels like my cells get bigger and they get a bit bubbly and it's like delicious um and when I was a little kid I, I think I was meditating but I like I never knew what it was but someone told me that the universe is everything that exists but that it's expanding and I was like but if it's everything that exists, there's nothing for it to expand into. How can it possibly be expanding? Because like there's no edge because it's everything that there is, but it's expanding. And I used to think about that. I think I was like, I don't know, five or six or something, like really young. And like my brain couldn't compute it. So my brain would stop. And so I, I would, it's like my brain would just go quiet. And I loved that feeling when I was really little. And I realized in hindsight, what I was doing was actually stopping my mind and meditating. But I would just say to people, okay, I'm going to just think about the universe now. And I close my eyes and like activate that. But it was with that wonder of like, how can it be everything and also expanding? Wow. Like, and then I'd sit and like my brain would short circuit because it couldn't compute what was happening. Um, I haven't thought about that for ages. I can't, I don't even know why I brought it up. Mm. Yeah, I like that. I think that is a technique. It reminds me of something I learned in like NLP. It's almost like you have to, bypass your mind a little bit to get to the subconscious or the conscious mind and you kind of do that by maybe asking it questions that are a bit like wait what hang on yeah and it's like you just you just kind of short circuit it like you say yeah I think cannot compute yeah like the Japanese the is it Japanese there's some um philosophical tradition where they do koans or whatever like like this what's the sound of one hand clapping and it's like and then it's supposed to make your mind go, hang on, how can a one hand clap? Like, like what? It doesn't make sense. So I think it's that same, that same ah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. That's so cool. I love it. Thank you so much. Yay. That was so beautiful. Thank you. I, um, thank you, Ron. <laughs> yeah. It just felt so different. I'm so excited about the other stuff that's going to like come through. It just felt like um, yeah. much more kind of earthed and grounded and solid and bigger like it normally feels to me like they take up the space of where I am but it felt like they took up so much more space um expansive huh we'll see yeah really like (laughs) where are the edges there are no edges (laughs) nice one well played well played (laughs) (laughs) I'm just gonna stop the record